I'm Jerry Nielsen, retired from Montana State University, where I taught soil science for 35 years. Today we're going north to Conrad, Montana, where we'll demonstrate how to make a soil monolith. Well, first of all, we need to make sure we have the representative soil horizons, and then we start cutting the side of the pit to make it smooth so that we can put a board tight against that soil. My side's all then we have to cut the edges of the soil monolith. <laughs> then we have to pick the sides away so that we can create a column. Next step is to put some cellulose acid, it's really just thick glue, and we pour that over the soil. We allow it to dry a bit, then we start tunneling around behind that column. Then we'll have to tear up some sheets or some kind of cloth around the soil, tie it up tight to hold the soil to the board. Cut it loose from behind so that we can loosen the entire column, or kind of mummy-like thing, from the soil wall. We pull the whole unit backwards toward ourselves, gently. lay it on the ground, but you have to be careful because it's pretty heavy. It runs maybe 50 pounds, 60 pounds. Now we're prepared to load them on the truck and haul them back to Montana State University. To the soils lab for temporary storage. Later, we take them to an outdoor setting for processing. That can be messy. The first step is to cut off the cloth strips. Now we apply cellulose acetate glue to a larger plywood board marked to the dimensions of the original monolith in the field. Next, we carefully transfer the undisturbed soil to a larger board that will eventually display the soil like a picture on a wall. Doing minor adjustments and then allowing the glue to set up for a day before removing surplus soil. We can start to remove the surplus soil, picking it down so that it's only about an inch thick when we're done. This is a lot like art in that it's tricky to know when to quit got to stop at the right time. We're trying to allow the soil to express itself, to express its natural horizons, its natural structure. To do that, we have to very carefully lift the soil pads, the soil structural units, upward and away from the soil, not leave it with a lot of knife marks. After we're satisfied that we have the natural structure and layers exposed, then we apply a somewhat toxic material that we do this outdoors. We pour a solution on top of the soil and actually soak the monoliths with a surplus of material so that it soaks all the way to the bottom and kind of binds the whole thing to the board. And then after that dries a bit, we scrape the edges to be sure that the board is nice and clean. Then we paint the board and finally we drill some holes so that we can mount the board. Now we have a soil that is no longer underfoot. We have a soil that we can actually see. We can see it at kind of an eye level, and we can see the complexity of the pores. We can see the organic enrichment, deposits of calcium carbonate, concretions, clay films, and a lot of other details. I think sometimes soils are so much underfoot and so overlooked and so um, just taken for granted. And yet, we realize that we really can't live without soil. We, we need, we depend upon soil. And so now we can get a chance to see what it is we're really depending upon. You know, we've seen how you could make one kind of monolith, one of the clay alone. Now, making a monolith in clay is one thing, but making it in gravel or in sand is quite different. And so you have to kind of use your imagination, and it's not hard, you just try something and see if it works.